need more lemon pledge. <laughs> First words out of your mouth no. during the podcast. Still, still <laughs> Can we start over? <laughs> Mr. Superman, he is no he. Good morning, Misfits. You are tuning into another episode of the Misfit Podcast. We are down a goon because we well. have... <laughs> are we? <laughs> That's I'm true. Kidding. We are down a specific goon. You think Sherb's going to listen to this podcast? We have at 100%. Yeah, his ear's up against now. the door right now. <laughs> he's he's in the ceiling. He's, he's just going to fall through. The door. <laughs> Eric Andre style, he's going to come he through the ceiling. He's his own mic up. He's in the air duct. We've right, added right. two goons. The fittest married goons in the land, Austin Spencer, and I got to get used to saying this, Caroline Spencer. Welcome to the podcast. Thanks. Welcome Thanks. to my humble abode. <laughs> Austin is uh, having a post-workout snack right now, and I'm Ted has instructed him to keep the microphone away. While he finishes his snack, we'll give a little bit of a preview if you would like to follow the programming that these two are following. Um we got something new this year. We got phase zero starting August 1st. I like that. Carolyn just gave a nice <laughs> zero symbol there. That's good. Um, starting August 1st, we are going to have two weeks of what we internally call athlete IQ baseline testing. Things like one rep max lifts, um, all of the things that we ask you within the bitch work to have 1K row, 2K, 2K row, row, 5K row, 10K row. Hunter really wanted to get in on that. <laughs> He's fired up. But you were like a bunch of things like one rep maxes and all right, we'll talk to you guys later. I was trying to include it Give all. Give him a minute. Fuck, I felt like I was oh. I was doing pretty well. Yeah. Um, we also have brand spanking new <laughs> other than one of them. Um, 12 Misfit Athletic <laughs> Benchmarks. <laughs> You need a job. I got a job for you at Misfit Athletics. So we have the short, medium, and long duration of gas stimulus, muscle overload stimulus, cardio stimulus, and chippers. Um, the reason why we're doing phase zero is because we ask for so much information from you guys to get the right stimulus or to hit the right percentages throughout the year. And we want to give people, especially anybody that's going to be new to Misfit Athletics in the 2023 season, the opportunity to really be able to tackle everything right off the bat and get used to the way that we do things. Um, we are going to be doing a phase zero podcast next week. Um, so make sure you tune into that to really get the ins and outs of, of what that's all about. And then the real big news is starting the 2023 season phase one begins on August, Monday, August 15th. Um, and that's really the, really the true starting point of the off season. Now with that, Austin, Hey, you're going to the CrossFit games. Yeah. <laughs> How do you feel about Crushing that? <laughs> uh, is this your first podcast? Kinda. I did one like a long time ago in the old studio. Yeah. And I don't remember what it was about, but it was the two of us in that one too. Nice. Um, but yeah, no, I feel freaking good. I'm pumped. It took a long time for it to like really settle in. Yeah. I think that was the weirdest thing about not having, uh, the moment at semifinals is like, I got the email and the call and the invite later than everybody else and even after i got all that stuff it's still like am i actually going to this thing and like every day i start training more and more and i'm like oh yeah i'm going it's so, like a vacation you're like not sure that you're like ah oh, it hasn't hit yet i'm not there yet yeah and then like, as you do more like you're starting to like pack and do all the prep that's required and it's like fuck yeah no yeah. i'm going this but, is kind of like the opposite of a vacation though <laughs> it's not very relaxing true <laughs> true except for well it's like it's it's less stressful training because like the whole time you're training for semifinals you're just like you don't really know what's going to happen um like whether you're going to qualify or, or not or if it's if it's going to be like all worth it in the end but now that you're just going to the games training feels like fun and motivation's not an issue and i don't know it's different it's a fun vibe even when I have to do stuff by myself at 5.30 in the morning. I mean, you could probably talk to this too, but I, I imagine the difference between first CrossFit Games versus second, like you obviously having now, you're now you're training for your second one. How's that 
different? How does that feel different? Or maybe even like the the clinching of that, you know, that at semifinals, like, you know, knowing that you qualified handedly, you know, for your second, for your second one, is that a, a different feeling the second go around? Um, yeah, training definitely feels a lot different now. Um, I think last year was a kind of, even though I did qualify, I still like in my mind was like, Oh God, what's going to happen there? Mm-hmm. Like, how's it going to feel? How am I going to be compared to like everybody else on the field? Um, and like, cause looking back, like when I thought I was going to qualify in 27, 2018, the ball ball situation when I got, was that 2018? Yes. The open uh, the ball ball situation. The open. Oh. No, that was 2019. 2019. I think. When I thought I was going to qualify that year, like looking back, I was like, if I had gone to the games that year, I would have brought, I probably would have been like just squashed. Yeah. Um, <clears throat> So this year training, I feel like really excited and I feel much more confident in like the game style workouts. Um, and plus like now that he's training with us, it's it's like the coolest thing ever. Yeah. So it's less stressful. There's less like anxiety going into it. Um, I'm super excited. I think I'm going to do pretty well compared to last year. What was it like for you going through? Like, obviously you had the moment at semifinals where you knew that he wasn't going to the CrossFit games. Then you began training. And then all of a sudden that reality was completely flipped upside down. When we found out that he was going. Yeah. Oh, oh my God. It so it sucked so bad at Atlas games because I like it. I think it hit me as hard as it did because I know the feeling of like qualifying for your first time and like, like you just get flooded with emotions of like everything was worth it. Like this is the the coolest thing in the world. And the fact that he didn't get to experience that was just like Again. heartbreaking. Yeah. yeah. And like looking at him, like I, you, he handled it a lot better than I did, but I was just a mess. He handled it better than all of us. <clears throat> yeah. And so like that almost made me Why are you feel, all crying? <laughs> that almost made me feel even a little bit worse. Cause I'm like, <laughs> He's just like such a great person. He was like happy for Joyelle going for his first time. Who? Oh. Yeah. And uh and so I was just like I couldn't really handle my emotions in, in that moment. You can probably tell in the photos. I'm like like super there's uh blood. No. Sorry. <laughs> like you can just tell that I'm crying. <laughs> blood everywhere. <laughs> <laughs> Wasn't her. It was so bad the blood was pouring out of my eyes. <laughs> I was just a mess. Um, and then, I mean, you the f- same feeling you had, like when we were in the office and you you showed me, I was like, "What?" Like my heart went through the fucking roof. Like it was just, I just can't even describe it. Like the coolest feeling in the world. But then also, like being super excited. Then I was like so angry because mm. he could have had that experience and he could have had that moment and could have felt what I felt last year. And, but he makes it easier cause he's like, Oh, well I'm going. So it doesn't matter. <laughs> yeah. Um, I, I didn't bring this up before because it felt like the kind of thing where it didn't make sense. But on Thursday before semifinals, I had a dream, like the most vivid dream of him being in fifth or sixth going into the rope climb workout and then going to the CrossFit games. And like, I'm not really the kind of person that remembers their dreams. So for me, it just really like stuck in the back of my head. And like, I don't think it was like a premonition, but it just, this was the first year where we went and I was just like, I just kind of knew you were both going to qualify. I could yeah. tell. Yeah. And that's the way that I felt about you going into to Granite Games last year. <clears throat> and then when it didn't happen, it was like, I don't know. The feeling was like really like childhood level. Like I was at a birthday party and I like didn't get the toy that I wanted. I couldn't like let go of the fact that it didn't happen. And I just had this feeling in the back of my head and eventually you know, a few days go by after and you just kind of forget about it. You gotta, you gotta move on. You gotta get into, you know, getting you ready for the CrossFit games. And then I got that message from Greg that was like, 
is Austin backfilling? Question mark. Oh, Greg messaged you? Greg messaged me. Oh. <clears throat> And I was just like, you know, like buzzing, like, wait, hold on. What's going on? I'm like, what are you talking about? And he was like, go to Joelle's Instagram. So then it was fucking full speed run next door. And I'm like, Caroline, you got to call Austin right now. Look at this. Look at this. Look at this. And everyone's like huddled up. And it was funny because I remember when she was like, you need to <laughs> open, Type. you need Type. to open, <laughs> you need to what? open Instagram it's and like, put it on speakerphone. And I heard you say, why? I don't like this. <laughs> I didn't I it was a trap. <laughs> it was. It was the most terrifying phone call ever. It was like your mom texts you and it's just like, call me. She's like, fuck. <laughs> That's what Caroline was doing to Austin. Austin on the Michael phone. Spencer. Austin. Open Instagram. It's like a five minute process. <laughs> well, Did listen, if I said go to, I don't know if you, I don't know if you would have like assumed it anyways, but like if I just said like go to Joy. She made Instagram. it more suspenseful. You were, it was yeah. fun. Yeah, you were like, like was, you were like, like I'm going to have a little game out of this. <laughs> Waiting for it. I, I mean, mean, and he did see the Instagram post before we called him. Yeah, a couple things right happened before it. you guys even called me <laughs> that like right by literally it. literally I didn't said, even like, in English. I, she was like, yeah. <laughs> I had care. I had a few chances to figure it out myself before you called me. Someone messaged me on uh Instagram uh like from my friend Tyler and he's like like so you in bro like did you qualify and i was like and this was obviously a couple weeks after right. like semifinals and the last chance qualifier i was like where have you been like no <laughs> i just got 14th in the last chance qualifier i'm not going uh, but like i didn't actually respond yet i just saw that and like imagined me responding and then like moved on but i figured i'd do it later and then i saw joyal's posts i think he made two one of them was like a french version and one of yeah. them was english but the picture was just like french and english so i was like not reading that moved on <laughs> <laughs> and then i got the call this and had to figure it pictures. all out <laughs> yes yeah, Vaughn made fun of me he's like me no read <laughs> so yeah that's pretty accurate <laughs> um so there's uh there's some there's some really good lessons built into all of this we got an explanation from him and then I've been told about some of the podcasts or interviews that he has done since and it was very much I've been doing this for a long time I wasn't improving at the rate that I wanted to and that's why I did what I did and for the universe to balance itself in the most perfect way for someone who <laughs> has been trying for so long and not taking shortcuts it was like the most perfect thing mm -hmm. And I think one of the biggest lessons that can be taken from this, and we can dig into the details more, but like people can look at your story and be like, if I really want this, it could be possible. Like you did the right things the whole time. You had to figure out a lot of stuff with balancing work and balancing life and all of that. And I don't know if it had backfilled a rookie or a veteran, you know what I mean? That sort of thing. Someone who had been a bunch of times. I don't know. It wouldn't have felt the same. Just the idea that he was this and not like, I don't know, a similar situation just in terms of maybe the length of how long he had been doing it. I think you, you know, finished significantly higher than him most of the time um, in previous years. But for that to balance out that way, like, did you think about that at all? Um, no, not until like other people had had brought it up. Like I started to hear things like like you like you did it the right way or whatever, just like stuff like that. And I was like, oh, like, I guess I just like worked hard for a long time and it just like never crossed my mind to try anything like that, like to try PEDs or whatever. Um, so like yeah not until people had started like comparing us in that way had i like started to think about it and give people some background though how long have you been at this so i started crossfit my sophomore year of college which was 2012 it was like the end of 2012 i think i did beginners class at this gym uh in december yep and then went back to school and like kept who training. was your beginners coach uh the jack man? it was jack was it yeah <laughs> Wow, yeah. that's a throwback. Yeah, it was me and and Tucker. We did the, uh, we did like a pull up Man, burpee air squat. Athlete. Yeah, <laughs> Tucker's the one who showed me CrossFit. He's like, look at these guys like Froning and Dan Bailey working out and yeah. drooling and stuff. 
And I was like, oh my God, I want to, I want to do that. Oh man, I want to work out and drool. How many, how many times did you guys do grace? Oh, I did grace like once or twice a week for like eight months. <laughs> It was the only workout I knew. Christ. I like, <laughs> I, I like left our beginners class, had to go back to school, and like we didn't have a CrossFit gym yet at school, so like we just went to our gym and just did like we couldn't go like touch and go, couldn't drop weights, so it was like one clean and jerk, put it down, rest like thirty seconds to a minute, do another. It was like took me like eight to nine minutes every time we did it. That's the kind. Of and then I started to figure out like how to like. Yeah. Crack on, yeah. It was more like a glorified weightlifting session. Yeah. <laughs> When CrossFit like started to take off and we started doing like benchmarks like that, like a lot of us had no business doing them. You couldn't buy Olympic weightlifting shoes like anywhere, but you could buy these powerlifting like boots that had a heel on them, but were like legit like leather, like patent leather, like almost like a kind of like a converse, like height basically. And I did my first... Uh, 135 grace in these inzer powerlifting <laughs> boots and i split jerked every rep nice hey, and i was wow. like legendary for getting this workout done in like five minutes <laughs> with a split jerk too with a split jerk every rep like every time i'd hit one it'd be, everyone in the gym would be like oh nice yes <laughs> They Good. had a heel on wow. them, though. Yeah, Jesus. but they did look like that. They had this... When you got Grace at 6.30 and bowling on lane 9 at 8.30. <laughs> Dude. I didn't know there was a TV right here, to be honest. Yeah? Yeah. We just put it up. Wow. Yes. Okay, to the right. Boots? To the right. Either those ones or the ones those the top highs? left. Yeah, those were it. Those I did I did it. Grace in those and split jerked. <laughs> 125 $125? bones? Those yeah, I feel so like the the strap around the ankle and the heel Portland are like now. counterintuitive. <laughs> yep. like you need ankle mobility, but we're gonna hold your ankle down. <laughs> All right, some, back to your story, Austin. Someone with blue hair walking around. I don't know Portland where I was right now. Oh, for sure. When did you start like doing the open? Oh yeah. And so yeah, so went back to school. Eventually, we found a gym like near our school that we could go to, and I started like cleaning their gym so I could go for free, and then eventually started like coaching a little bit there. Um, but literally when I started CrossFit, I was like, I want to go to the CrossFit games. Like that was why I started in the first place. So like I had the open on my radar. Like I, I figured it all out pretty quick, like what I needed to do to start progressing through the sport. And then when I came back in 2013 for summer, like you were training Sherb, Gabe, Cody, Joe, like all those guys were around training. Like you were around sometimes, like you were starting to get into it too, right? In 2013? No, I started in 2014. 2014? So uh, end of 2013. 14 was my first open. Yeah, mine too. So 2014 was my first open. For some reason, I didn't do 2013. Oh, because it happened in January, right? Mm -hmm. So I had started kind of, I was doing beginners like during that whole time. So I was training for like the following year. So I came back for summer and we just started doing like the blog and it was like pretty raw, like the website, just nothing right special. It kind of first yeah, it was kind of new. Yeah. Like and we were just like yeah. doing every single piece every single day, just like crushing ourselves. And I was like working part-time jobs and all that kind of stuff and just kept training. And then I think two years went by 2016, I qualified for my first regionals, kept going since then. So. And 2017 was the year that you came in sixth? Yeah. Yeah, second year of regionals, I came in sixth place, which was like a big surprise. I wasn't expecting to be like that high just yet. Um, but in a, in a close sixth place. Bare, yeah, it was like... Less than a second. For the people who don't know. 0. 0.54 seconds. 0. 0.54 <laughs> seconds is the difference. Yeah. Yep. Who's counting? No one. Not many. <laughs> no one anymore. <laughs> yeah. No, it was... Uh, yeah, so it's been it's been a, a, a long journey, but it's been like super fun um, and rewarding to like just keep grinding away. And there were years there were like ups and downs like there. There were seasons where I thought it'd be my last one trying because I felt like like there's always like this thing in my in the back of my head. Like I have to work more. I have to make more money. got to pay my bills and like student loans and all that kind of stuff. So I was like, how long can I like balance this out? And so that was always a battle. And obviously I'm not making any money like. I'm not good enough at CrossFit to like make money doing that. 
So no, you're I, not good at, enough yeah. at Instagram. You're pretty good at CrossFit. Well, yeah, I'm <laughs> t- terrible at Instagram, but I also don't try that hard to be good at Instagram. So this is true. There's that. Yeah. But um, there, there are better things to try hard at. Yeah. But <laughs> so uh, to yeah. Oh, sorry. Were you gonna? I, yeah. I want to follow up kind of question on uh, talking about like how y- you were just talking about balancing like you know how do I make money? How do I still compete and whatnot? And you've kind of been fighting that for a long time not as much like there's obviously the financial element but it's become more of like tra- a training optimization thing because yeah. you've done the you've 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 kind of spread the or gone the the spread of high volume low volume like high volume and i'm in the gym all day my job is at the gym I'm, yeah i can be at the gym versus maybe more of what you do now. Can you talk a little bit about kind of that evolution of going from kind of trying to figure it out? Like what do, what do I need to do to make the jump to the next level? Um, yeah, there's a lot of trial and error. And then obviously with like jobs changing and just like me growing up and maturing more, it just like took a really long time to figure out. Um, and for a lot of it, I didn't necessarily have you or anyone like trying to help me optimize that either. So it was like me just trying to like figure it out on my own like outside of like having you guys like coaching me and stuff. Um, so like as my jobs changed, like it would go like started out like grocery store, like coffee shop, like stuff like that, which was easy to balance. Kind of like you just worked like, you know, four to eight hour shifts or whatever and just trained before and after. It wasn't that bad. But when it started getting towards like, all right, I want to be like a full time athlete, but I still need to make money. We tried the gym thing where I was like kind of like manager behind the scenes of the gym coaching a lot had remote clients, stuff like that. And so I was at the gym 24 seven and I thought that'd be perfect. Like it just like we had the SDA. I was, I was working there. I was like, I had like five different jobs. Austin is always, not a house cat. Yeah. <laughs> I was always at the gym <laughs> an indoor cat. <laughs> um, and it got me in trouble. So I was like, basically I, if I was at the gym, I wanted to train or I was thinking about training, whether it didn't matter which job I was doing. So I was like spreading myself really thin. I wasn't doing a good job in like any of the different things I was trying to do. Um, training was probably taking a hit, even though I didn't really know it. Um, and then it kind of like took a conversation with you and, and a little bit with like Jen helped a lot too, just like helping me like figure out like, maybe this isn't for you. Maybe you need to like, you know, take like quit one job and, and focus more on something else and stuff like that. So took a lot of like trial and error there. And then we realized, um, that, that just like, it wasn't working basically. And I had to figure out what I was going to do next. Um, luckily Max, Max Bragg, uh, is he's owns his own business at this point. And so I had done tree work for about a year or two with another guy and, um, and him. And when he started his own, own business, I decided to go work for him full time, which was definitely a big shift because he, I mean, tree work is like manual labor, right? So if I'm not at the gym, I'm now doing manual labor for eight hours a day. Um, and that, you know, obviously comes with its own challenges. So then you and I started talking a whole lot more, trying to figure out how I could possibly like keep training and competing and doing this job. Um, and that's when it like, like, I wasn't sure I could do it at first. I thought I'd have to like quit. I think after like the 20, the 2020 season, I like almost like I was like burnt out. I was like done. And we then the two, the two opens in one year yeah. that year as well. Yeah. And it, like so we had gone it. to like Brazil, we had done like the mayhem classic. We did the French throwdown as a team, like all of this stuff and like nothing was panning out. I was tired and I was just like over it. Um, but like at the same time, I just like, I can't quit. So I was like, I gotta keep trying. So I like, it took a while and then 2021 like we really started to like figure things out like i needed lower volume if i'm going to be working this much and i need to like have somebody help me with like my food and like i had to like up my calories by like 1500 to 2000 calories um something like that and it was just like things started like falling into place and then granite games 2021 like went pretty well and i just felt like i was i i was burnt out a little bit after granite games but not so bad that i thought i was going to quit i just needed a break um and so that break lasted a little bit longer than i think it should have but then 2022 came around and i like slowly got back into shape started feeling really good and it's obviously like the best season i've ever had so 
Yeah, I think it's interesting having you guys on together because you can both give some insight into people want to know now, is it possible to be a CrossFit Games athlete if you have other obligations, essentially? And for a lot of people, the answer is no. And like for you, you have a lot of stuff. You coach, you remote coach, you know, you do a bunch of work for Misfit Athletics with the, you know, the website programming, things of that nature. Um, so that sort of, I think, lines up a bit more with the narrative that some of the other athletes have. And then we go added layer, CrossFit Games athlete now, Austin does manual labor. He doesn't just have a job. He doesn't just, doesn't just have something outside of that, but he has something that's taking, you know, physical resources away from him. So when you guys hear that conversation and know what you do, what does it mean to you? People talk about, can you go? Can you go to the CrossFit Games if you have a job, basically? I mean, yeah, I've seen it, having it so close to home, like me, like we, him and I are very different athletes. So I think it kind of depends on who you're talking about. Um, but like with me, like I could very easily get overwhelmed with just what I have going on. But like, you know, we've, we've had conversations of how to kind of navigate that situation mm. where it's like, okay, how do I manage things that stress me out that shouldn't stress me out. Um, and as far as like my schedule versus his schedule, it's taken a lot of time to kind of figure out what I can do physically in the gym to kind of optimize my abilities, what he can do in the gym to optimize his. And I think if you have a very clear path and a clear goal and you know, like, okay, this is what I'm going to do. I need to commit to it. You also need to commit to figuring out how to, to make it happen. And for like, I couldn't have done it on my own. Like I needed like you and like you guys to, to help me out with that. And, um, so yeah, I think, yeah, the answer is yes. I think you can go to the CrossFit games if you have a life outside of fitness and it just kind of takes time and it takes trial and error and it takes you committing and being okay with days that aren't good and days that are really good. Mm. And that's one thing that we've both struggled with. Um, I mean, being a competitive athlete, like you have a bad day and it's like, I fucking suck. This is the worst. Why do I feel like this? And then the next day it's like you go and PR something like, so having the right connections and the conversations and, and planning and making sure like, okay, this, like my goals align with what I'm actually doing. Uh, I think it's yeah, absolutely possible for, think, for somebody to do it. I think that's the, that's the nugget that people need to take. It's not, can I be a, can I have a, a part-time job that's not CrossFit related and still go to the CrossFit games? It's can I, can I figure out what I personally need to do and then arrange my life in such a way that is conducive to reaching that goal. Because like you said, you've got two two different people here. Low volume, higher volume. D works outside the gym, works more, certainly more inside the gym. Uh, like, I, I think, and we keep going back and forth, but it's more about identifying, like, that. that's a single variable in a multivariable system that is contributing to to your guys' success. So like, yeah, people want that answer to the question, but it's like, it's not a very good question. Like what, <clears throat> what things need to be put together in order for somebody to not, you know, necessarily need to be a full, full, full-time athlete in order to qualify for the CrossFit games. And then obviously like goals and stuff like that come into play as well. Right. I and think it, it does get a little complicated too with somebody who is not necessarily like either in a relationship or in a relationship with somebody who does the same thing as you. Like, I don't know how, how things would have turned out for me if I had like pressure from people on the outside, like, Hey, we don't see you anymore. Like you don't come out and do this with us, this, that, and the other thing. And like, if you can't handle that pressure, or if you don't have the ability to say like, no, then a lot of people, that's what adds stress and that's what breaks their their routine and their cycle and then it's just like this vicious cycle of okay getting back into it and then you have that pressure coming in and then you break and then it's like I don't know if I can do this so being married to somebody else who is a CrossFit Games athlete um, certainly makes it easier on us because our goals align and there's and 
I mean, most of all of our friends understand what we do. Um, but it is very much a full-time job from the time you wake up until the time you go to bed. And we miss out on a lot of things, but... Sure, we're, it also depends okay. on what you define as full-time job, right? Like, yeah. Just because you're not training or recovering you know 24 hours a day doesn't mean it's not what you center the rest of your life around effectively right so i think you add sort of two layers to this conversation one we've already identified that maybe it's not best for you to be in the gym all the time kind of seven days a week and then the other side of that coin is it might not be ideal that some weeks you're between 40 and 60 hours of manual labor how are you balancing that um it's it's been a lot of like just listening to like my body and and trying to figure out when to like push training versus when i need to back off and like focus more on like work and stuff like that so and that's part of the, the thing that's taken so long to figure out like yesterday for example i <laughs> ran <laughs> very good example yeah so yesterday was i mean Obviously, like I'm in the middle of games prep and my focus pretty much is on training and Max understands that. Obviously, he's a CrossFitter himself, so he, he's he been super helpful in like allowing me to take a couple more days off a week and train. Um, so, you know, yesterday morning, 5.30 a.m., I went for a 90-minute run or 81-minute run. Um, don't get hunter fucking, upset don't you dare go 90 <laughs> i didn't 81 minutes. it was 81 i wasn't about to go any further than that trust right, me we're good um yeah. so i did that um and then went straight to work and it just happened to be like the hardest day of work we've had all year it was a big crane job so we're taking down like huge crane job huge yeah, crane job crane the crane guy. was gigantic <laughs> you um yeah so anyway crane jobs typically mean like we have a lot of a lot of big trees coming down um and it's kind of like interval work like you're at first like waiting for like max is usually in the tree for to like cut the tree so the crane can pick it and bring it to us and then we process the tree so like cutting it up chipping it whatever it is so it's like rest work rest work rest work like all day long and yesterday was like 95 degrees or something and i was sunburnt and just like insane and we worked from 7 30 in the morning until i think i got back to the shop at 5 30 so 10 hour work day just insane and i texted you and i was like i don't think i can train today and normally like sometimes like i would be okay with not going to the gym like skipping a day because work is hard but being in the middle of games prep i was like really battling that and like wasn't sure if it'd be like, am I going to hurt myself trying to go train right now? I feel like I'm about to have like a heat stroke. So luckily Drew was like on the same page as me and I just did like a cold plunge and called it a day. But yeah, so it's it like there probably have some days in the past where I would have pushed it and tried to train. And that's part of like the learning curve is like, I know that would have been. You would have ruined today. Well, yeah. So <laughs> even if like training had gone okay, like I got through it. I would have gotten home at like 8 p.m. or something, had to go right to bed without, or like force feed myself basically, go to bed, not cool down or wind down or anything. And then today's my day off of work so I can train all day and it probably would have been terrible. So, All right, Misfits, just a quick break to shout out our show sponsors and save you some dough on our favorite products. The Suffer Summer Collection is here Wednesday, July 27th. Um, if you're watching on YouTube, I got this uh, fancy dancy, schmancy tie dye, custom tie dye suffer shirt. We've been asked to do a tie dye suffer for a long time. Here it is. Another thing that you have requested is the suffer running shorts to be available in both a five and seven inch inseam. Um, you have it now the five and seven inch inseam. And these are black. That's another thing. Solid dark color was one of the requests. So we did that for you. The return of the running pants is here. Um, we got some great, 
they they're based they're based on the old Yagers, but they've got some great updates to them. So they'll be, they'll be called running pants. They got that suffer patch right on them. Um, and last but not least, another endure hoodie, nice, lightweight, good running hoodie. Good. Uh, in Maine, we call it like a fireside hoodie type of hoodie you throw on if you're going to the beach at night or sitting around a fire and trying to escape the bugs, get a little warm once it gets cold at night. And we got some tie dye socks. You can get all of that at sharpentheaxeco.com Wednesday, July 27th. Use the codes Austin or Carol to help their CrossFit games journey. We are also brought to you by Proper Fuel. You can head to properfuel.co, use the code word MISFIT to save on your order, uh, both pre- and post-workout with the hot months kind of here, especially in Maine. We're going through kind of a heat phase or a, a heat wave right now. Electrolytes in both the pre- and post-workout, super important for athletes to kind of boost their recovery, boost their performance when we're talking about pre-workout and uh, trying not to sweat out all the sodium and the the salt and the sugar that we need to perform well, uh, but also getting that back in your system post-workout with your protein, your creatine, your carbs, all that stuff. Um, and if you're going to be traveling to the CrossFit Games like us, why not have a shitload of the proper fuel travel to-go containers? We're going to be slamming those all week in Madison. Properfuel.co. Use the code word MISFIT to save. We are also brought to you by ourselves. If you are looking to join Austin and Caroline in their 2023 season prep training, we have a really important two-week stretch beginning August 1st that we're calling Phase Zero. We are setting all of our baseline numbers for the year so that when we give you pacing instructions, percentage lifts, and when you are looking at which pieces to attack, which stimulus, you're going to have data for all of that. We're going to get that done in the week of August 1st and August 8th. And then the big show, Phase 1, August 15th, it starts. Um you know, we, we don't like to brag. Maybe we do. Every single Misfit Athletics remote athlete was top 10 at semifinals. We do not fuck around. We have an entire season plan that has been refined based on all of the data that we got in 2022. Um, it is definitely the best program that we have ever written, and we're really excited for you guys to give it a shot. Misfitathletics.com or the SugarWad Marketplace. If you are an affiliate owner or you're an affiliate athlete that wants to bug your affiliate owner, you can get in on mm -hmm. phase one as well. Teammisfit.com or the SugarWad Marketplace. All right, back to the show. And my coach's yeah, brain right now goes to a lot of people listening to this are start like starting to get, well, people in the South have been dealing with this for a while, but people, you know, in the, in the Northeast, Northern part of the United States, different parts of the world are starting to go through those days where the heat is really starting to, to be an issue and the cascading effects of Austin making the right choices and us working that out are so huge because if you don't get your core temperature down to a place where your body can start to recover, you're talking about training while your body is basically not okay to accept that. That's driving your core temperature up further. Resting heart rate's There's already elevated. Almost, almost zero chance that he's got enough sodium and carbs and water in himself to get through that. He gets home. He's not going to get enough calories in, but he's going to get so many calories in that it's going to fuck up his sleep <laughs> and he's going to, you know, sort of wake up a bunch during the night and the next day he's going to go in. And when I look at it, it's like, okay, he, he was on, on a lower volume day anyways. And like, we can fit those pieces in later on in the week or one or two of them, if their wheelhouse can disappear. So it's not, it's not the end of the world. And for athletes, I do understand the mindset of like when it gets really hard, proving to yourself that you can do it. But if you sort of draw that map out and see that you're just going to obliterate yourself and not be able to recover at all, whereas you could sort of push stuff off. Um, I think that's important for people to realize at this point in the year, depending on the type of climate that you live in, like with a, a lot of, uh, a lot of bathers out front in the front yard of Misfit Gym Portland today. You know, you you put yourself through that kind of workout and you can't drop your heart rate within, you know, during your rest period on an interval, that kind of thing. That your heart rate is going to stay up there and your body's going to be confused about what you're up to and whether you can recover if you don't go get your core temperature down. So um, you start to go through a little bit of that 
as a coach, just trying to stay healthy and you can really understand where the athletes at and just like, you know, we worked out for 30 minutes trying to extrapolate that in my brain to 10 hours in a pair in jeans and boots. Yeah. It's like, yo, um, so yeah, just something for, for athletes listening to this, to think about coaches, to think about, um, if you are spending your entire day with your heart rate jacked up and your core temperature up, it's going to be really hard to get hardly any benefit out of your training. Yeah. Um, I think it's important too, to remember, like it's, it's become more about the long game than anything. Like, mm. obviously like I've been doing this for about 10 years and like missing one day of training because, or even part of a day of training. I mean, I ran in the morning still and I worked, but like missing that day so that you can have more good days moving forward is going to be way more beneficial in the long run than forcing yourself to go into the gym because you're like, I have to qualify tomorrow or whatever, like wh wherever it is in the timeline. Like, like think about like, like you're in this for the long haul. If you're trying to like qualify for the CrossFit games, like within your first year of, of training for it, like you're in for a big surprise because that's not going to happen. And <laughs> I mean, I love it when people are like, that guy came out of nowhere. Like he just qualified for the CrossFit games. Like his like, you know, first year. It's like, just cause you haven't heard about him doesn't mean that he hasn't been grinding away at this for a long time. So yeah, you don't hear a name and then you go to games.crossfit.com and you're like, oh, this person came in 16th of the 2015 regionals. Yeah. <laughs> like, okay. I've been doing this for a long like, yeah, time. Yeah. They've, they've been around. Trust me. I feel like it took like 10 years to get to that point too, though. Like being able to accept the fact that like, okay, I may not be having the best day or I may not be able to get everything in today and like know that that's not going to ruin your season. It sounds crazy probably to a lot of other people, but like I'm sure a lot of athletes can relate. And now like being able to get to a point where it's like, okay, it's fine. Like it's not the end of the world if this training piece didn't go well or if I miss half of the day because of, you know, X, Y, and Z. And just being able to kind of like sweep it under the rug and move on has been so huge, I think, for both of us um, as far as like training goes. Because like before, it would be like, it would like ruin Do you a week. I think that's, <laughs> that's probably one of the biggest and for people who like would either message me specifically like, you know, after semifinals or whatever. It's just like, like, oh, it was really fun to watch both of them and Caroline having had having had qualified it was just like watching the confidence in Caroline compared to even just last year where it was just like a little bit more like am I going to make it am I going to make it going to a a place where it's just like I don't know like like where which which podium spot do I am I going to take this year um but it's like the comp the the combination of the confidence and I think that stems mostly from like even over the last like five years, just the maturity level in both of you really that has like gone from, you know, you maybe three years ago, bad training day. It's like, fuck, that's a, well, stay, well, I'm going to 10 foot bubble yeah, around no, Carol, maybe for, Carol maybe for the today. next 12 hours or so. <laughs> and you've never really been like you, you have your days, but it's not, it wasn't, it's not quite the same thing, but now it's like <laughs> boot things around the now door. it's like, like you said, it's like you have a bad training day and you had one. Austin day. saves it though. Austin <laughs> saves it up for, for one good. <laughs> yeah, yeah. I know uh, when I get the I'm back call, no Caroline, <laughs> it's like twice a year. Caroline's like, um, <laughs> We, you need to talk to us. Yeah. Yep. It's like a Sunday night, like <laughs> squat clean session. His hips bothering him. Austin just kicked the bench and broke his cell phone. I'm going to need you to send him an email. <laughs> send Austin an email. <laughs> send him a postcard <laughs> with instructions. I just bottle it all up for about six months and then all hell breaks loose. But do you think, do you think that that's like a, a like a, a thing that you've, cognizantly paid attention to or is it more just like well especially now having qualified one year qualified a second year there's an element of like okay i can i don't want to say relax a little bit but the mentality is a lot different right yeah 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 it's different like i think after like kind of looking back at how things went leading up to last year before the granite games and then having like such a successful semifinal for me being able to look back and be like, okay, I didn't, like I did have days where I had to skip pieces and I didn't beat myself into the ground and I still did this well. I was like, okay, 
it's I'm fine. Like there will be days and it won't ruin the rest of my training. And I think just like having that like confidence in in my training on everything else, the 7,000 other pieces that I do right. during a year. Um, I kind of, it was like kind of a moment where I was like, okay, I, I kind of proved to myself that it's okay to, to, you know, take a day off if I need it or like listen to my body. And, um, I think that was, that was big for me. Cause now I'm like, I can look back and be like, okay, I'm, if I skip this piece, karma's not going to come to me, come for me and like not let me qualify for the games right. or something crazy like that. Yeah. Tur you know, turns still... out, it turns out the energy you expended being irritated and yeah all cortisol ridden because of a bad training piece was was actually way worse yeah than just and being i mean like, that still oh, wow. that thought does still come into my mind where like i'm like okay i really need to like get out of here or like i'm just exhausted how am i going to do this piece and every once in a while i do think like what if this is the piece that i skip <laughs> and i don't qualify <laughs> it's the magical yeah. piece yeah. it's like floating you know <laughs> should have done that the golden spray. aura around yeah. it and sometimes I do the piece and it goes really well. Sometimes I do the piece and I'm like, should have not done that. Shouldn't have done that. But I'll still qualify for the games because <laughs> I did it. That's why, though, that support system is really important for him to feel that way, but then also send that text yesterday is like, am I overthinking this? Should I just go train? Like, or is another person going to verify that, like, I have pushed this too far? Mm -hmm. Because I think a lot of people get into those moments where it is more mental than physical. And it's like, sometimes you really do just need to grind and get it done. Um, and then other times like yesterday is the perfect example. Like this is too much. Yeah. Like this, you're not going to help yourself in this moment at all. And you already know you've had those days where you've come in and I'm like, why is Austin skin purple? Like, and he's over there deadlifting and it's like 135 looks heavy. And I'm like, all right, he's yeah. going to go for it. Well, the hard part of my mind too is like, you know what I do, but like, you don't see every day like some days are actually pretty easy at work like it's not that bad i just get a lot of steps in or something like that but it's not like super heavy stuff and like dragging a mile like with brush and stuff like that but like yesterday like i didn't know how you were going to react to that text like i felt like i was gonna just pass out if i tried to work out or something but like who knows what your reaction could have been you know right. and it ended up being the like the right one and in, and in, in my mind but like I, I think know, it is important because athletes can, no offense, you're all nuts, um, can get into like a crazy kind of wacky yeah. headspace because there are so many pieces to the puzzle. Um, and when it's like, I need you to get out of your head and go be an athlete, sometimes that is the thing. But then there are, you know, the other cases where like, no, this is like very physical and like, stop it. Like, not a good idea. Yeah, even if it's not like a intense day i guess you're still in the elements like there's still a lot to be said about just yeah. fucking standing on your feet for right. 10 12 hours other athletes day, when they're sitting. not working out are in an anabolic state and you are just not when you're there working even if it is a easy day right quote unquote yeah yeah i mean i think a good example is like your day yesterday and then my very last day of hell week like i knew there was going to be a lot of volume i had a lot going on just like with personal you text stuff. me you were like i gotta start at like 4 p.m i'm like yeah let's go and, <laughs> yeah well and then like i think it's doing flutter kicks in the ocean at midnight basically yeah, it's as, the equivalent well, as, <laughs> as an athlete like i was like this is, this is the last hard day and you texted me that morning and said like final day whatever and like that was really all i needed to get going and and do some things in the morning and then when we had a conversation after I said like, yeah, it's not ideal, but yeah. then like the, the last half of my training day was great. Give, I mean, yeah, I had a lot to that do, day. That was wild. but was just like 14 having pieces in four hours, <laughs> just having like somebody else being like, look, this, these are the tough days. This is going to be like, this is, you know, one of the few days that are going to be like this and this is why this, it's all going to be worth it. Like these are the moments that like need to happen and you have to push through it. It's not like with him yesterday, like he physically would die probably. Yeah. He tried to do I wouldn't something. be here today. <laughs> I physically wouldn't have died. I just you had a lot to do. <laughs> yeah. Austin's going to be injured. <laughs> for, for people listening that, that don't follow the programming or, or don't follow it at certain times of the year based on where you're at as an athlete, 
twice a year, two weeks out of the entire year, um, we beat the shit out of our athletes on purpose. So bad. Um, and yeah, right. let's say she just breezed through it next week, next year's hell week is going to be <laughs> just a little bit more you special. You also went from back to back mock games week yeah. right into hell week too. So yeah. that's a little, that's special. Yeah. But I think honestly, Austin got the call, came in like mid mock games week and just hammered everybody. Try everybody. First <laughs> event, like, everybody's like three events in and Austin walks in just like, sup, I'm here, here I to just, fuck shit I up. I hammered that workout. Hammered I was like, the damn, like, I'm going to the CrossFit box box games. I'm going to win. I am going to win the CrossFit I'm going to win the CrossFit games. <laughs> and then the next day comes around and I couldn't even do the second workout. Like, oh, <laughs> It's like volume. the meme of the two dogs, like the one who's already looking out the window, and, the and then Caroline's the other one who like <laughs> picks her head up after like three days of mock games, including the lap around Standish. Honestly, honestly, going from mock games to Hell Week wasn't that bad. I, to be honest, like I, I forgot that it was Hell Week for the for the majority of it because it was just kind of what I'm used to. Yeah. Until Friday, Saturday, Sunday. Yeah. The Whatever your three day chunk like, is. This arm is on the other side of the, <laughs> the building. My left leg is like at the Clink Center over there. I'm like, oh, I can't do anything. Um, so I have one more bigger question for both of you, but I want to tee it up um, by asking you, do you remember when it was in the season when you were essentially like, I'm not getting any better. I'm not as fit. I'm less strong. Like what is happening? It was in the, it was, we'll Those call it the spring conversations. But do you remember this year, this year at what point that you said that to me? <sighs> was it like between open and quarterfinals? Was it after Wadapalooza? Was it before the open? I don't think so. I think you might have had it in your head at that point, but I remember it being in some sort of proximity to quarterfinals because it's like, okay, now we're, now we're going into something that like really, like this is the first thing that really matters. Yeah. But do you remember that feeling and saying that to me? Yeah. 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 I think so. Cause I was, I was nervous going into quarterfinals. Mic. Sorry. I was nervous <laughs> going into quarterfinals. Um, I don't know. I don't know what it was. I don't know if it was because there was a lot more training that was just kind of like sporadic and by myself or I wasn't like in a set routine yet, but I'll yeah. tell him what it was. Okay. Um, Jesus. there's just when, when we, we say this all the time on the podcast when we're doing, uh, interviews, but the goal is to educate and inspire um, and to create a, a level of familiarity with the way that you guys feel to the way that they feel, regardless of whether you are trying to crush the open quarterfinals, semifinals, games, local comp, whatever it is. And when you have those, when you're that type of person that has those aspirations, the goalposts don't stand still. They just keep moving out and out and out. And I want to be at this place at this time. I want to be able to lift this much weight. Um, and you guys get so focused on what you're doing that you can tell that when you have one bad session with a barbell or on a machine that like that becomes your reality. This is who I am as an athlete. It's not because one of what could be a hundred factors landed me here today and that's why I can't hold the pace that I want or I can't do this. Um, so basically what we did was, is we went in and looked at 2021 um, versus 2022. And I won't give every single thing here, um, but 62nd in North America to 19th in North America, 40th in the entire world. Um, the improvements based on workouts that I connected to each other for a similar stimulus, 23%, 89%, 116%, 154%, 183%. Um, Impro she had improvements. Eight, yes. She had 878 points in 2021. She had 310 points <laughs> in 2022. Um, yeah, wrong direction. And then what was really fun was going into, I, she, she already believed in the concept and had proof of concept after semifinals, but going in and comparing last year's workouts to this year's workouts at semifinals. Um, 
And it's just so important, I think, for athletes to realize that these, I don't know, ruts that you get in or these moments where you have that training session, you are demanding something from yourself that most other people will not demand from themselves. Like I go in, I work out, I'm bitter, I have fun with my friends, I'm going to live a little bit longer. Like that checks a lot of boxes for most people. And it clearly does not check boxes for you guys because you just keep coming back and keep coming back. So the bigger question is you both improved a stupid amount from last year to this year. How did you do that? Like, what do you think changed? What did you do? Is there anything that you can point to? Like there's a long time in the sport and making massive improvements within one year. How'd you do it? Um, I think, I think everything just finally clicked and I was in the right mindset for a majority of the year. Um, I mean, over the years, like having to try to like figure things out, like probably like slowed down my process, my progress in a way, like, like just impeding like the flow of like training and all that kind of stuff and not having the right like mentality behind a lot of the training because of just different situations going on. And I think over the past several years, like dialing that all in, it's all like, because that stuff is dialing in and my mindset is getting better. Like it all can just like, like all that work can come to like fruition basically. So I think it, it wasn't, I mean, we did a lot this, this year to like make improvements on like my, my training schedule and work schedule and all that kind of stuff. And that certainly helped, but I think it was just like the accumulation of everything I had done and learned over the past several years. And I mean, eventually it's got to pay off. And luckily for me, it paid off in the way that I am going to the CrossFit games. But I mean, I told you, and I think I told a few other people, like, even if I wasn't going to the games this year, I was stoked. Like this year was the best year that I've had competing. Like I was super proud of my, my efforts in a pretty stacked semifinal too. Yeah. I mean, Alice games was essentially like, there's one spot open to go to the games. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> it's like the first four are pr like, unless somebody gets injured or something like they're probably going to the games. Right. So it's like one spot. Um, and so it was like, you got Those damn you, Canadians. Yeah. <laughs> Freaking Canadians. They're fit, man. Um, hey, well now you're the only American on not the, that fit. That's true. Yeah. They were bragging the, the yeah, Canadian announcers. What's up now, Greg? There was like I put like a list in the my sweep. head of like <laughs> of like <laughs> Of like no, because I put like after the uh, after the Sup now fuck <laughs> after after the trigger like, warning after you got your your Just invite I was like thinking through my head I was like here's the list of all the things that <laughs> Austin should have like Austin deserved and didn't get because of because of somebody else's you know decision to skirt around what you didn't for ten years yeah. And that was one of them. It was I like, love how oh, it's fired up Canadian, you are right now. It's an all Canadian <laughs> podium. It's like, get fucked. Yeah. Like, <laughs> wrong, bitch. Like, <laughs> not for long. Yeah. Sup now, Greg. Sup, Greg. Love you, you guys. You were saying? Uh, yeah, sorry. I don't remember. That was great. Thanks. <laughs> okay, it's your turn, Caroline. Um, from a physical standpoint, I think I did a much better job as a whole this year with warm ups, cool downs, that type of thing. Um, being okay with doing multiple sessions, even if the workload isn't that crazy. Um, so I, I kind of took that part more, a little bit more seriously. Whereas like in the past, I would be like, text Austin, I got everything done in two hours. Like <laughs> I'm going Which home. Unreal. I and get one piece done in two hours. Looking at that little <laughs> 10 by 10 whiteboard in like size check, two check, font. Check, 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 like, check, check. Like 38 Carol, notes, check marks. Done. Unreal. <laughs> 10 training pieces and Carol's like, sup? <laughs> <laughs> Come here, you. I mean, and I would never like do a piece and go directly into another piece like back to back to back without, yeah. you know, being, feeling okay. But like the importance of recovery and like your heart rate and all that stuff, like I've, I've done a much better job. Um, so I think that was a, a big part of it, that and being okay with eating food. It's taken me, I don't know, three years maybe to not be afraid of calories. Um, and now I'm, geez, when I started with Mike, I was Ever like, tried to drive your car on empty. Yeah, yeah I get it. <laughs> oh, I trust me. I understand. Um, 
I, when I started with Mike, I think I was like 250 carbs. Like what? And now I'm like pushing 450, 500 carbs, which is like a big deal for me. Um, and I feel a lot better. I'm, I'm not gigantic. Which was, which was <laughs> <my fear. laughs> Carol just turns into a bowling ball after <laughs> four days of eating eight carbs. I mean, <laughs> Have you ever seen me have like a full on food tour after a competition? And I did that this year. Yeah, I was so And proud. it was incredible. <laughs> and I'm also in the past, I saw a lot of Instagram stories with a lot of yeah. cream horns. Since yeah, yeah, yeah. since semifinals ended, I think she you've had at least two pints of ice cream in one sitting. No, no, no. Not like <laughs> hold on. Hold on yeah. a second. Yo! <laughs> Two separate occasions. So one pint of ice cream. One, I think one was before semifinals. The first pint that I've had. Either way, you finished. You sat down and ate a whole pint of ice cream. Yeah, yeah. On multiple occasions, and I'm so proud. Yeah. Because <laughs> so, you you are the psychopath who takes yes. like a bite of a dessert and puts it back in the fridge, right? Freezer, but yeah. Freezer, yeah. Yes, she freezes it so she can have it for <laughs> three years. <laughs> 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 and then I have to see it every Austin time I open the freezer from upstairs and it's just like uneaten, uneaten. I wasn't able cream. to drive home for 15 Engage. minutes yesterday without eating the other 28 crackers I had in my car. <laughs> it like, it doesn't make what sense. What kind of crackers? Uh, just like the sesame, like rice crackers. Oh, they're really good. Are yeah. those in your glove have box? Have you ever had Mary, had, Mary's Gone Crackers? Were those Drew's glove box crackers? <laughs> they were, they had fallen out of the thing into just into a Shaw's bag. So the accessibility was oh just too much for me. I was really hoping you were just going to say onto the seat or onto the floor or something. <laughs> into there's, my four ro there's four rows <laughs> in that thing. And for my numbers, I needed two of those rows because I had my dinner all figured out, was ready to rock. So those other two rows were in my car. And it's like, you expect me to drive 13 minutes without eating <laughs> these 28 crackers? I yeah, ate I them in the delicious. gummy bears on my way home <laughs> I can autopilot this drive. I'm fine. And I figured out, like, if if the bag is sealed shut, I, I'm okay. I won't eat it it's all. It's too hard to open. <laughs> but I'm also driving, so I can't. Like, it's a, it's like a two-hand job. Like, you can't. Two-hand <laughs> job? <laughs> you can't open that bag with one hand. So if it's sealed shot, I'm okay. So I was like, I was like literally just like gummy bears by the handful who, eating them on the way home. Was it? Someone said they were, when you came into train, I think on this Saturday or whatever, they yeah. were like, yeah, I saw Austin walk in. It was like Saturday at like 4 PM. So I saw walk Austin walk in with like a bag of gummy bears <laughs> or someone was like, there's a bag of gummy bears on the cubbies. And we're like, yeah, yep. Austin's training. Mm -hmm. I also like that I've usually like, I'll have not usually, but like, I've also had like a five pound bag of gummy bears in my back seat. And like somebody like came up to me, he's like, why do you have so many gummy bears in your car? I was like, you never know when you're going to need gummy bears. You really bears. don't. They get real sticky Better this time Better to have it, not need yeah. it, and need it, not have it, it. I also got, they're like Black Forest gummy bears. Have you ever had those? Black Forest? Yeah, it's like, it's a different brand, but they're better than the they, you Haribo. You can actually chew them. Yeah. And like, even though the, they're like hot and kind of melty, they're like freaking good. Not always. Right it's now. just because he keeps them in his car. Yeah. He cooks them. Or eats them. Okay, it is finish. it is final thoughts time? Do you have something? Well, no, I I was I had a two thought answer to that right, question. Let's go. I didn't finish. I don't need to be anywhere. You do. Yeah, I know. <laughs> That's um, true. And then from a mental standpoint, training this year was very much like, without a question, I'm going to make semifinals. Without a question, I'm going to make it to the games. I think that was huge in my confidence in training, because like. I don't know, depending on what the piece is, I'm like, should I be doing this with a 150 pound sandbag? Like, this is too heavy. And like knowing now, like, okay, I am, I am going to make it to the games. I am good enough to do it. I, this is my second year, whatever. Um, it just makes training easier. Like having that confidence and, and not so much of like a, am I going to like, what's going to happen this year? Am I going to go to Atlas games and come in 10th? Like, so confidence for me has been a huge like building block in in my process athlete anxiety centers so much around what you've done in the past and either living up to that or improving on it and then what is coming next and that can be how can i do this piece knowing i have two more or it can be what if i don't make it 
to semifinals or what if I don't make it to the games or what if this happens and your ability to be present and just do the thing that you're currently focusing on can completely change where you're at. Cause if your mind is somewhere else, it's always sort of be bopping around to like, like oh. somehow you're, somehow you're thinking about like the other clean and jerks that you have to do or the other row piece during the rest period on your interval. Like you're just not going to get the same out of the piece that you're doing. Um, final thoughts time. I'm going to go first. So I don't put you guys on the spot. Um, Austin and I had a conversation, I don't know, maybe a week ago. And it was sort of about like, if I'm so impressed with the balancing of the universe in terms of Austin doing the right things and working that hard for that long, how can I learn from him? How can I like embody that and put it into practice? Um, I wanted to be publicly very sour about what happened. Um, I wanted to, you know, just sort of go out there and be like, this isn't fair. This is bullshit. Like really sort of pump negativity into the situation. And I was talking to, um, a, a friend of the misfits that was visiting recently and just talking about like, how do you deal with trolls online? How do you deal with people talking to you? And, um, we sort of went down through the levels of how to improve on that level one, never feed the trolls, never, ever feed a troll. Like just don't respond to people that are going in and trying to ruin your day for the sake of, and it's like, you don't have a profile picture. You have zero posts, you're private, you have zero fault, whatever it is. Um, the next level can be having empathy for people in a certain situation. Like, could you picture yourself in a scenario in your own personal life where every things were so bad for you that you got joy out of going online and fucking with people just to try to make yourself feel better. So the idea of being like, damn, that person's probably going through some like nasty shit in their life. And then I said, Jedi level, which I haven't gotten to is I don't really care if people say anything about me personally, but when people say or do something associated with someone important to me, I get fired the fuck up. And like, again, I think that is still, even if you feel like you're protecting someone that is still pumping negativity and, you know, you know, pouring gasoline on a fire type of situation. And it's like, I thought about it and I'm like, I don't think Austin would want me to act this way. I don't think Austin would act this way in a million years. And then I don't think like he would like that for me to you know, I don't know, what, what, what am I going to say? Like some sort of holier than thou, like, or, you know, just like, I'm mad. I want you to hear that I'm mad because it's not fair. Like, you know, something like that. So, um, thanks Austin. I <laughs> didn't do that and I feel better about it. And I sort of just kind of kept to myself and like tried to think about like, no, that's not what this is about. This is about Austin's going to the CrossFit games. He's been fucking grinding for so long and like now he's going and that's what I should be focusing on. So it's like, if I'm so impressed by this, how do I embody it? And that was, that was step one, not being a baby about it. Yeah. And I appreciate that too. I mean, I mean, to be honest, when did we find this out? How long ago? Was it two weeks, two, two, two weeks and a half ago? weeks? Yeah. So it's taken me personally, like, it was probably maybe like a week and a half after the fact where I was like, okay, I'm, I can talk to people about this, like a podcast or whatever mm. and keep it cool. Like it took me a while to kind of understand and like think of things like that. And like, you know, there's no good in coming in, in coming out of, there's no good coming out of me going on Instagram or talking to, you know, whoever and being like, yeah, fuck this guy. He should feel terrible. Like he did this, this, this. He took this, this, this away. But like in the end, like Austin's going to the CrossFit Games, so that's really the only thing that matters. And any all of our energy should be going towards that. And it it did take me some time to kind of get that under control. And like him being a big part of it, because like I would get fired up and talk to him, and he would just be like, eh. <laughs> like fuck i need somebody to be angry with me yeah. i feel like it's way too easy i was angry i still are. i, I, <laughs> I, I know my might surprise zero you. anger through the whole thing i was just like this is this is great like it's all just Yay. happening like i don't know it was like and i didn't i don't know it's kind of funny how 
people have turned it into that how just like mellow it's all been about like the whole how i've been about the whole thing and like i don't know i feel like it's just the way i've always been like I, i'm not i'm not one to like get super fired up in one direction and you know like super low in the other direction or whatever i just kind of like try to stay i don't want to say like stoic necessarily i just stay neutral and that's how i've always been and it's it's been working so far and like this year has proved that and um i don't know i think it's cool so i appreciate you not being you didn't need to me the, to like yeah, come to like, the rescue you were pumped no, that just, you made the game all it just all worked out so like there's no need to like go on instagram and like bash people and do all this and like it's just like you know we won like we did it we we're going to the game so it's cool yeah i was you, he can't I, call himself stoic but you, you can have that label you're stoic. i was i was, ang <laughs> I was angry for it i wasn't angry i wasn't necessarily angry I, I, it was more it was more a disappointment that you didn't get to experience I think because everybody who's listening to this has been on at least one side of that equation where it's either like I am just a third party spectator who sees that somebody tested positive and therefore somebody else gets bumped in uh bad bad job guy who tested positive congratulations guy who deserved to get in there but then when you're on the other side of the coin where, two out of four semifinals, you have misfits who are in sixth place. And then going into the last weekend of the Atlas games, you're just like, and then Austin sixth place, a close sixth place. It's like how many, f God fucking damn it. Like what, what did, what did I do wrong? What did we do? What, you know, what, what, what could we have done better? That sort of thing. And it's just like all, and that, that being on that side of the coin is very different. It's like, you just have nothing but like, sat like your sadness you feel you feel for you mostly and that sort of thing and obviously like caroline taking it probably the hardest of the entire group it's like yeah. it's like all of those things were taken in a way um and that's that's really upsetting it, it's, you don't get that experience of like all oh, sunday night in montreal like going to fucking town with austin and caroline 2023 games athletes so it, it was more like those things but i think that 2022, 2022 hopefully 2023 and yeah, 2023 yeah. <laughs> oh yeah prepping but the yeah my i think my final thoughts are just like going back to your original comment drew it's like what are what a what a what a full circle kind of trek that whole thing made where somebody who's just like you never you I guess the the moral is you never know how close you are to achieving that goal and maybe maybe he was maybe he was that one year away maybe he was that 0. 0.54 seconds that you were and it was just like no what you were doing isn't good enough how do you get better I'm going to take the shortcut Austin and you as well like we're not taking shortcuts. It's just, I'm going to put and my most head, other I'm athletes. Put my head I down. Mean, and most other athletes. Yeah. And too, that's, to be it, fair. that's another funny part is like, like I've become like, I'm the guy that did it like natural or whatever, but most of us are <laughs> right. freaking natural just yeah. doing it. Like, and I just happen to be like the one that like, I like it's paid off for me in a very obvious way, but man, like everyone works so freaking hard and like, that's also the hard part is like the sport is growing so fast and like the more times you don't qualify, the more you're like, well, everyone else is still getting better and they're already there. Like, can I, I got to catch up even more. Right. So that's when people like, unfortunately, some people get desperate to try certain things and whatever it is. And like, you just got to stick to your own course. And I mean, part of it too, is like being okay with, if it doesn't happen, like I was never going to regret these last 10 years of training and like skipping opportunities to go out with friends and do whatever it is. And well, like, and what, what's the like, okay, so you, you do decide to cheat and you qualify for the CrossFit games. Like how do you feel the Tuesday after the games end? Yeah. Like probably not great. Yeah. Like, and I, I suspect anybody who's made it through that entire pipeline would probably say the same thing. And, but it's, it's more just a nod that, People like you guys are still out there who are grinding, who did start CrossFit through a beginner's class at, you know, an affiliate yeah. and are now 
two weeks away from going to the CrossFit Games. I'm together. only 15 years in, guys. Yeah. I don't know. I'm thinking <laughs> now. <laughs> prime, I don't know. <laughs> if I get like four or five body parts replaced with robotic, <laughs> like a robotic spine, right elbow, yeah. lungs. I feel like you're, you're <laughs> one really powerful sneeze away from a wheelchair. <laughs> <laughs> if I'm being honest. Maybe maybe it pops everything back into place. It could, could be that Somebody too. Somebody give me a feather. Oh man, like watching Max sneeze right now is <laughs> Oh, if I'm if I'm gonna sneeze, I'm doing the like the drills. I gotta get ready for it. My spine <laughs> needs to be Kegels. The freaking, the freaking I do Kegels some of you every time I sneeze. Just Max, in case. Max Before or like, after. <laughs> yes. Max will sneeze and just like crumble into a ball. And I'm just like, I can watch it. Like, he'll be like about to sneeze, you know, be like head up. And I'm like, oh God, like it's about to happen. Hurry, he sneezes and just like, oh, like just so much that pain. Poor fucking kid. <laughs> okay, I know we're wrapping up, but have you ever seen Get Him to the Greek? Oh, yes. Yeah. <laughs> that is no. one of the funny. Oh my God. You have not seen so many funny mm. movies. What that do you watch? You? Documentaries all day? Mostly. Oh, God, that checks it's hilarious. Out. Mostly. But when he, when he has to shove the drugs up his butt at the airport and he has to sneeze, he's like, <laughs> <laughs> it is one of the funniest things ever. That movie is hilarious. That's Austin, true. watch that movie and report back. Yeah. Nope. Your name's Hunter. <laughs> yeah, I've seen it. Yeah, that one and the night before, you still got to watch. Yes. Does anybody, ha anybody else have final thoughts? Do you have final thoughts? Yeah. I mean, uh, just stay your course if you're trying to to get somewhere or you have goals and that could just be like in in the open or whatever like believe in yourself do what you need to do don't let anybody on the outside like change change what you're doing in a negative way and and just trust the process and find a support system that will help you get there and i mean you got 10 10 years in the making right here is proof that it works if you really like truly Put yourself out there and, and commit to it so yeah. work hard kids don't do drugs <laughs> <laughs> only the good ones <laughs> only in gummy form did we do it we did it are we done nice. congrats congrats all right ladies and gents thank you for tuning in to another episode of the misfit podcast and thank you to our show sponsors <clears throat> you can head to sharpen the axe and use the code austin or use the code CAROL to save on the Suffer Summer Collection dropping July 27th. We have tie-dye shirts. We have both five and seven inch inseam shorts. We got all kinds of goodies. Sharpentheaxco.com. Use the code Austin or CAROL. Properfuel.co. Carol. Really important to get your electrolytes in. We got electrolytes in our pre-workout, our post-workout, and you can get both of those at properfuel.co use the code word austin or carol carol we need a spencer code that way you can be good at instagram and i get oh. paid for it <laughs> <laughs> we're also brought to you by ourselves you can head to misfitathletics.com teammisfit.com or the sugar wad marketplace for your individual or affiliate programming needs we will see you next week